Hello, Tom Orbell here. Today we're going to look at the wonderful world of the Equation Editor, which is available in Microsoft Office packages. Specifically, we're going to focus on its implementation here in Excel. On the screen right now, I have some examples of some formulas. The one here on the left comes from Bandari uh, online example. The citation is in the top row in row number one and the same equation packaged slightly differently but exactly the same uh, on the right hand side here is from the Blumen textbook that we use in our quantitative methods course at York University. Um, both the same, both a little bit different. What I'm going to do is go through the steps to show you how you can produce a production quality uh, formulation so that it looks really good when you're creating a slide in PowerPoint, whether you're putting text into a document or working for uh, producing nicely annotated and described content in Microsoft Excel. The references, I'm just going to delete them from here and move them because we don't need them once we get started. Uh, I'm going to concentrate first on this first function. As you can see, as I grab it and move it around, it's on a transparent background. And being on a transparent background has all kinds of benefits. It also has its drawbacks, um, but it depends on what you're going to be doing with this equation. The key thing is that it's not actually a live functioning working equation. It's there purely to illustrate what the equation looks like. The problem with this, and I pulled it off the website, is that if I zoom in on it, we can see that it's quite ugly looking. There's lots of compression uh, going on here, uh, effects of rasterizing and sort of simplifying that graphic and not maintaining its true crisp sort of text style. So what we want to do is avoid this type of representation, which if we're expanding and enlarging things, uh, things will tend to look a lot worse. So I'm going to delete that equation and I'm going to bring this one back into the picture. This is sort of the target of what we're trying to produce. Now it's also a graphic. The graphic means that we can't edit it. It's not a live computational function in Excel, but it looks really good. And if we zoom in on it, we can see that the sort of line work quality is maintained. So how do we do that in this environment? Well, in Excel or Office packages in general, we can head over to the insert ribbon and all the way over here to the right hand side where it says equation. We're simply going to click on equation and notice that it inserts this box that we're going to allow to type the equation here. And when we select it, we also notice that the ribbon for equations becomes available for us to, to work with. The first thing is that the text here is going to be quite small, maybe a little hard to read. So I'm going to head over to the home ribbon and I'm going to increase everything here to, let's say, 22 points, just making things a little bit bigger and easier to see. These can all be adjusted and modified later. So now it really is about putting the equation in the way that we would write it out if we were using a pencil on a piece of paper. We're going to start off by typing in Y on the left-hand side, equals, and then I realize that I've got this fraction. So I'm going to divide the space into the numerator and the denominator, and then I'm going to continue working on each component part. I'm going to quickly click back on the equation tab, and notice that over on the right hand side there's a whole series of buttons. This one here that says fraction, means so we can choose different styles of our fraction. So the dotted box means that there's going to be content in that box, the numerator, and there's going to be a horizontal bar, and below that we're going to have the denominator. Again, we're going to have to put content into this dotted box. We could have things that are skewed or uh, in line, linear fractions and so on. I'm going to choose the stacked fraction. And you can see that it's drawn in the bar 
and it has these placeholders that say, hey, you need to insert content here. I'm going to start with the denominator because it's a little bit simpler. Uh, I simply select it and when I do, you can see that it's slightly highlighted. It's now waiting for me to insert content into the denominator. I look over here and I say, well, I need a sigma. I'm going to need to put in a square root sign, a 2 and a pi. So let's find this sigma symbol. That's available through these options here. If you put your mouse near the bottom middle, you get a pull down tab. You get lots and lots of options. There's a tremendous large number of symbols that you can insert. We're going to take the sigma symbol from here and then we're going to head back over here to the radical options and we're going to select the square root symbol and then notice as it's drawing the square root for us put another dotted box inside that's waiting for content. We're going to select that box and we're going to type in two on the keyboard and then we're going to go back over here to where we have our symbols and we're going to find the pi symbol. And just like that, we've got the denominator of our fraction completed. Now we're going to concentrate on the upper part. So I select the equation, select the upper box, and notice that we have um, e to the power of, and then we've got another fact, fraction up here. So before I type in the e, I'm going to set it up so that we know that we have this exponent coming its way. That means going to the script option and we're going to have one box that's lower with the superscript or the exponent as another dotted box to the top. So let's choose that form and it sets up again the structure of the equation that we're going to fill out. Now I can go down here and I can type in the E and then realizing that the top is yet another fraction I can choose the stacked fraction as part of the equation, or as the exponent, sorry. Once I have this, I can select what I want to enter. I'm going to go to the beginning of it, and I'm going to put in my minus sign, which is required. And then I'm going to start with the denominator here again, because again, this is relatively simple. Two times, and then I've got sigma squared, so I'm going to need to choose another placeholder so that I can put in the squared and I can go and choose sigma there. Now in the numerator, I again have a component that's taken to an exponent. So I'm going to choose the exponent. I go back and change the exponent to a two I'm going to highlight the remaining box. I'm going to choose the brackets and then type in x minus and then find from the symbol pull down list, I'm going to find mu. And then when I click away, I've got my equation properly inserted and looking really great. The nice thing about this as I can move it around. It has no background, but I could right click on it, head over to format shape, and I could choose any fill that I want to put in the background to color it, make it white, and so on. For now, I'm just going to leave it with no fill. I could also select everything and head over and simply change the font size and make things bigger or smaller as needed. I can take this and position it wherever I need in my workbook to illustrate what it is that I am trying to annotate or what function I might be running in a cell that's doing all kinds of dynamic calculations in the background, but this illustrates what the functional form is. What's really great too is that I can simply copy and paste that equation. It's control C, control V if you're using a PC. It's Command C, Command V if you're using a Mac. You can, of course, always select, right click, and use the copy and paste tools uh, if you're using a mouse. What we might want to do when we're annotating is have the function, and then in a second form, 
go in and start to change the values within so that you can illustrate the thought process of what you did in terms of the calculation. So we can have almost like we would have back in grade school where we're writing the f equations out by hand on paper and showing how we substitute values in sort of step by step. We can do the same thing here, but it's going to be legible to everybody because it's in beautiful uh, equation editor typeset font. So great way to organize your work, keep things clean and um, and simple for people to read. Really great for presentation materials, for writing reports and producing sort of slide contents for presentations. So until next time, give this a go and we'll talk again soon.